Thanks for staying tuned. Following the establishment of a dialysis center in the Bayelsa state capital, Yenugwa, Governor Seriake Dixon says his state is going through a silent medical revolution. According to Governor Dixon, the feat is part of his administration's revolution in the state's health sector. The governor stated this during an inspection tour of the new Government House Hospital and the Bayelsa State Diagnostic Center, both in the capital. This is the newly built Bielsa Diagnostic Center in Yenugwa, the state capital. The fully equipped state-of-the-art dialysis center is to cater for the medical needs of the citizens with kidney and other health-related problems. For better understanding and proper use of the facilities, Governor Siriaki Dixon invites some medical experts from the United States of America on a facility tour of the center. Governor Dixon believes that the opening of the center will boost medical tourism in the state. A silent revolution for change and for development and prosperity. And this is one of the um, hospital investment, the healthcare investments the state has made. Uh, what, what we came out from this area is the renal and cardiovascular units. And of course, the other side is for the regular services. And it is set. It's the first time we're having dialysis facilities in the state. And you can see the wonderful team uh, of experts, uh, partners from the U.S. who are here to operate it. The governor is also using the medium to call on Nigerians practicing outside the country to take advantage of the new facilities in Bielsa State. I want to also use this opportunity to call on our experts, our professionals in the diaspora, that Bielsa has world-class facilities and we have programs that will accommodate you. So come home, and give your services, you'll be appreciated. I congratulate Bielsa. At the end of the tour, the governor reaffirms his administration's commitment to consciously fast-track development in the state. Since 2014, more than $500 million has been spent to tackle the menace of Gully erosion in Cross River State alone. Sadly, very little has been achieved by way of containing the menace with homes and residents facing daily dangers. Our community report tonight looks at how erosion has ravaged Cross River State and the efforts being made to win the war. The saying, little drops of water make an ocean, can be used to describe the situation in Cross River State where the land slowly splits until it becomes a massive ravine. That is the result of erosion, nature's potent weapon against the state. It moves without care of who or what is in its path, destroying everything. The residents understand the enormous risk involved when using this walkway. But what choice do they have? Their words are different, but the message is the same. Help us before erosion takes us. In time to time, like you can see tires here, we use tires, we use different Marbles. ways to stop this rain from washing this place. Sometimes we bring cement and put, in, put some blocks, but we can't stop it. The, 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 the strength of the water is more than what we can do. When the rain comes again, there will be nowhere for us to pass. We are locked in, we that are leaving this site. And the gully, has destroyed so many houses and people are stranded. Even one man there, an old man that has been retired for, for some years now. Mm. An old man. He's looking for where to lay his head. I'm threatened, terribly threatened, and my children too. Any day it cries, we are outside. Just leave everything to God because I've tried my best to seek for help. And uh, no help is coming forth. In 2014, it was reported that the World Bank earmarked $500 million as intervention fund to tackle erosion in Cross River State. And a lot more money has been thrown in from various donor agencies over the years. But all efforts appear to be a waste of time, as the money spent seems to only anger the erosion. New map, the World Bank agency had stepped into it in 2013. I think they have gone a long way because we are where the engineering design has been prepared. The latest reassurance of intent is from the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, 
at this town hall meeting in Calabar. Who says the federal government is throwing everything but the kitchen sink to win this battle? I want to emphasize that, you know, of course, there are several different things that the federal government is doing. Uh, I'm sure that you're familiar with the uh, new rules that have just been, well, that are in the budget, and we're hoping that to be able to achieve all of this, uh, the old family got a very road, and uh, some of the erosion control is going We, we, we believe that these are very important projects. We believe that the people must be given the benefit of this project. One thing that should be understood is that while everything needed to effectively tackle the problem is being put in place, erosion continues to move with one thing in mind, consume until nothing is left. In the southeast, Anambra State Governor Willie Obiano has reassured residents of more developmental projects in the state. Governor Obiano gave the assurance while inspecting ongoing construction on some roads in Inewi and Umunachi communities in Inewi South and Dunokofia local government areas of the state. Infrastructure is important for the development of any state, and Willie Obiano of Anambra State is not wasting time to see that construction on some town roads in Newe and Umwachi areas of the state is properly done. From here now, down. First is the St. Thomas Church, a long stretch of Okai Titi Road. Work is ongoing in NS. He is pleased with the quality, but wants the contractors to speed up work. I must say I'm so far satisfied, but I would like them to increase on the pace of work. You know, they are, about, they are a bit slow with uh, what they are doing. The governor and his team moved to another area where the residents complain of the disturbing threat of erosion and flooding. He also meets with the party faithful there and reveals his plans for the community. If you form yourself in cooperatives, the government will be able to assist you. Uh, uh, coincidentally, the Commissioner for Agriculture is uh, your son. So it's easier for you to approach him and he will give you all the details. I want the Lewy community to benefit from uh, what we are trying to do in agriculture, particularly the export end, which is uh, for vegetables and other things. Umunachi is another area where projects are ongoing. With the Anambra election drawing closer, the tour around the communities provides an opportunity for Governor Biana to become acquainted with issues bothering various communities, and he says tackling these problems will be the crux of his next election campaign. Time now for the business news update, and here is Emana Amawe. You first. First Bank. Many thanks for staying with us. Welcome to Business News. Nigeria's Ministry of Finance says the sum of 375.8 million Nara has been paid to the first batch of 20 whistleblowers in relation to the recovery of 11.635 billion naira. Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemia Doshu, says the payment is the first under the whistleblower policy and it underscores the commitment of the Buhari administration to anti-corruption. The minister explains that all payments are taxable and are only made upon confirmation of the final recovery of assets as authenticated by the Federal Attorney General as being free of legal disputes or litigation. And Nigeria's total domestic debt stock at 11.6% of the country's gross domestic product in 2016 was considered healthy for a sovereign rated B plus and B. This is according to economic analysts at investment and securities firm FBN Quest in a note released today. The economic note, however, says Nigeria's domestic debt stock was reported at 11.97 trillion naira, that's about 89.2 billion dollars, at the end of March 2017, showing 8% increase due mainly to aggressive FGN bonds by the debt office. 
And if Nigeria's federal local debt is therefore expanded to include de domestic borrowings by state governments, bonds issued by the Asset Management Corporation and other agencies, the total will amount to some 25% of the 2016 GDP level. And the all-share index of the Nigerian Stock Exchange reversed yesterday's negative close, posting 1.51% midweek. Chimezie Obiwagu tells us how to buy interest on bellwether stocks offsets the decline in some banking and consumer names. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Just like anticipated by most market dealers, the bulls returned to the market today, all thanks to the sudden reversal in the share price of Dangote Cement, which contributes majorly to the market capitalization. Traders say up until two minutes to the close of trade, the market was in the red. But with an addition of 9 Naira 45 Kobo to the share price of Dangote Cement, the market entered into the green zone. The All Share Index went up 1.51% to close at 32,686.72. The market capitalization remained within the 11 trillion Naira region. On the price movement chart, International Breweries is leading the pack of gainers with a share price moving the most by 10.22%. It was followed by Forte Oil and Dangote Sugar. Down the ladder were majorly stocks from the banking sector, with FBN Holdings topping the price decliners down 9.22%. Volume of shares traded dropped to close at 499.10 million, worth 4.07 billion naira in 6,424 deals. Interestingly, despite the drop in the price of FBN Holdings, activity on that stock contributed majorly to the total volume traded, making it number one on the top trade list. Market analysts and traders believe that the last of the bullish run on the equities market is yet to be seen, particularly with the recession in South Africa. They expect foreign portfolio investors to flow into Nigeria assets. And that was the Stock Market Report. I'm Chimezie Obi Iwago. In the meantime, U.S. stocks opened slightly higher with the Nasdaq Composite leading the way, but there are three key events on the horizon for Thursday that may move the markets. Joe Maladrino reports from the Nasdaq market site in New York. There are three key events all taking place on Thursday, June 9th, that could potentially point the market in one direction or the other. These events include the UK election, scheduled testimony to Congress by former FBI Director James Comey, and a European Central Bank meeting. Of the three, Comey's testimony has the potential to rattle U.S. markets the most, considering how stocks reacted so negatively on May 17th, when the New York Times reported that President Trump asked Comey to halt the investigation of former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. The back half of the month could also lend to some volatility with the FOMC rate decision on the horizon for June 14th and the quadruple options expiration in S&P and Russell rebalances on Friday, June 16th, which will certainly see a surge of volume at the close of trade that Friday. And of course, June 30th marks the end of the second quarter. In the absence of earnings, traders are mostly forced to focus on macro headlines until the season kicks off again in mid-July. There's an old adage on Wall Street that says, don't short a sleepy market. Let's see if that continues to hold up. From the Nasdaq Market Site in New York, I'm Jill Melandrino, and this is VOA Channel's Business News. Major markets closed mixed today on concerns around the decline on oil prices in Africa. Investors are seemingly exiting the South African market as a country nears recession. Here are some of the numbers. That's it on Business News tonight. I'm Emana Amawe. The news at 10 continues shortly. You first. First Bank. Still ahead on the news at 10, world number two, Novak Djokovic, suffers shock defeat in the French Open at the hands of Austria's Dominic Thiem. That's coming up in Sports News. Please stay with us.